Hi, thank you for joining the first installment of the Systems and Plants with Energy Pro. In this video, we'll be discussing how to model different HVAC or heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. So let's first look at the, the systems section in Energy Pro. Uh, you're going to see uh, a bunch of tabs. So let's first look at the general tab. Uh, we're going to name our system accordingly, the same as our existing system, set that up as existing. And we're going to click in this section here to define our system. On the left-hand side, we're going to see a list of approved uh, or a bunch of appliances approved by the California Energy Commission as far as uh, systems. You won't find any older systems. You may find older systems, but you're going to find mostly uh, systems from this date. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and manually build in our own systems, and we're going to ignore the left-hand side. Uh, for our uh, proposed or our existing baseline building. So again, name it accordingly. And let's first look at the typical type of systems found in most homes, which is a split system, which has a furnace in the garage or attic crawl space and uh, an air conditioner outside. So let's go ahead and model our air conditioner in as a three ton unit. Okay. The sensible is a little bit lower than the output, but you don't really need to put that in as any. Uh, particular number for calculation. Uh, the efficiency should be based on the nameplate or if, or the vintage based on the building. Uh, so let's say I have a split system gas furnace uh, central system. Uh, these generally start out at 75 percent based on this uh, 1940s building. Okay. If I have a package unit, uh, these typically uh, have cooling systems. Uh, sometimes split systems won't have cooling systems, so if that's the case, you can go ahead and zero out the outputs and the sensible. And Energy Pro will see the efficiency as zero and only look at the heating efficiencies. Okay, different types of uh, systems you have for split systems. You can have an electric resistance furnace. In that case, you're going to have to put in the HSPF for the he heating seasonal performance factor. You can also have a heat pump, and again, you're going to have to put in the output and the HSPF number. And if you have cooling, you're going to put in those values as well. And if you have uh, a gas heat pump, you're going to have a coefficient of performance number. Uh, hydronic systems can be modeled in as well as Energy Pro by selecting hot water. And this is again left at as a split system. What this does when you, if you select this as hot water with this approach, there's two approaches for hydronic systems that you can use. The first approach is setting the heating type to hot water, okaying that out, going to the residential tab, and setting our hydronic space heating accordingly with our setback. So we're going to say that our heating boiler, which is our boiler or our domestic hot water boiler or our domestic hot water tank, provides the heat for our hair handler. So let's say that our domestic hot water tank is providing our heat. What Energy Pro does is it looks at our plant section, our domestic hot water tab, and it looks at the recovery efficiency if it's a large storage water heater. If it's a small storage water heater, which is something anything uh, under 75,000 BTUs, it will look at the uh, uh, energy factor. There's another approach for modeling the heating side using combined hydronic systems and that's by uh, go ahead and leaving that as none on the residential tab going back to the general tab heating section setting this to gas furnace and just go ahead and put in put in the AFUE based on the the energy factor or the recovery efficiency so let's say we had a we our large storage water heater had a recovery efficiency of uh, 78 percent so we're going to go ahead and put that in as our recovery efficiency of our existing system and that's our uh, and this could be our hydronic air handler or our our baseboard or our radiators okay and we're going to go ahead and if we have baseboards we're going to go ahead and set that accordingly as well and if we have more than one radiator that exists in this building let's say we had Four radiator, four one radiator on this floor and four on this floor. 
or three, let's say three on that, the four, one on the first floor and three on the second floor. We're going to say that there's four total in the whole house, or five total in the whole house, five radiators. But if we don't, if we just have one hydronic air handler, we can just go ahead and set that to one. And if we have radiant loops, again, we're going to go ahead and set that to one. So with uh, radiators and hydronic uh, or radiant floors, we're going to make sure we set these accordingly. If this is a radiant floor, if it's duct ductless, and if we have a heat pump or any type of mini split system, we're going to leave this as ductless as well. And if we have any type of wall heaters or floor heaters with no fans, again, we're going to leave these as, as, a, as ductless. And that's if we have any type of system that's ductless. So that pretty much uh, wraps up hydronic systems. Um, tune into the other videos that we have on systems and HVAC and heating, ventilation, and air conditioning.